turn it over now to Paul Morrow. He's an attorney and former NYPD inspector. So, Paul, legally, I guess if maybe you're a good Samaritan, right. I don't think he's a vigilante because he didn't go, kind of go after this guy. If you're trying to restrain someone who many believe uh, he was putting their lives, their safety at risk, is he going to face charges? So there's a lot of context here. Um, first of all, if he does face charges, it's not going to be an intentional murder charge. It's either going to be something based on his being reckless or negligent, okay? But either way, those are charges you don't want to face because they're homicide charges. They're a sidestep from murder. But let's remember the context. You know, we've had a rash of stuff in the subways where we've had people who are also mentally ill pushing women in front of trains, doing all kinds of stuff. And you heard some of the verbiage from Mr. Neely from that witness who says things like, I'm done, I don't care if I die, et cetera. Those are signals to people who were trapped in that car. Mm -hmm. This is going really bad. And that... But that still doesn't... That, that isn't, like... He, he didn't attack anyone. Just because he's yelling doesn't give somebody the right to uh, choke them to death. That's, that's definitely no justification. I've been around many people that have mental illnesses and were yelling and stuff. And my first thought isn't, hey, let's choke this person until they die. That plays into what the defense would be for this Marine. His defense is going to be something called justification. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty much what it sounds like. I had to take the actions that I did, however risky, to mitigate a commensurate risk. In other words, what I did was justified because of the risk that this guy posed. Now, we don't have... Okay, but what risk did the guy pose? He didn't, he didn't take out a weapon and start shooting people. He didn't start stabbing people. He wasn't punching people. He was just yelling at people. And how can he prove that this guy was going to kill people, which would warrant uh, the uh, homeless guy being killed? He wouldn't be able to prove that have video of, the, of what he said, so we don't know what risk he posed, but we do know this. He had an open felony assault warrant. Jesse, in this town, nobody wants to charge felony assault, least of all Alvin Bragg. If you look into why he has that open... Okay. okay. Yeah, and, and in the past, he, he would assault somebody, but at that very moment, was he harming anybody? No. Did, did he do that? No, probably not. Did anybody else? No, more than likely not. So that's like no justification for murdering a person. Warren, he broke the orbital bone and the nose of a 67-year-old woman in the subway. Wow. So he's no stranger to danger. And so you add some of these facts up and you start to say to yourself, you know, if I were in that car, Maybe I would have done the same thing. Yeah. And the narrative... So, if you were in the same... If you were in that car and somebody come, came onto the subway screaming about food and stuff and not caring anymore and having a mental breakdown, you would also murder them because you would not know that the person had past history of violence. And what if they didn't have a past history of violence? What would you do then? Would you still want to murder them? The narrative that he held, there's this meme going around that he held onto the chokehold for 15 minutes. No, it's about three minutes. I have it on my website, obsessed.org. The full video is there. It's about three minutes. And what's <clears throat> interesting is that at about the three and a half minute mark, he's still moving. You yeah, because when people are being deprived of oxygen, being choked or being killed, they're going to fight back from being killed because that's what humans do when they're being killed. They fight back so that they don't die or try to keep themselves from being killed. You see him take a deep breath. This is after they've let him go. So I want to know, there's an autopsy? Has a toxicology test been done? Is there a pre-existing uh, condition like we have with Eric Garner who was not charged? Well... Oh, wow, well, bringing it back to Eric Gar Garner, who was also murdered, who was murdered by cops and put into a chokehold. Okay, so now they want to blame this guy dying, not on a person choking them to death, but because he may have had 
a pre-existing uh, condition or was on drugs. Which, if he had a pre-existing condition, well, then choking him is even worse. Who also died, allegedly, from a chokehold? There are a lot of complexities here. Yeah. And for our political class to act so childishly, only for the, all the racial arsonists in this town are topping off their gas cans, and it's a disgrace to see. Yeah, they're trying to distract from their own failures. And we are... Well, what's a disgrace is people defending somebody murdering a person on a subway just because they were yelling. I'm just terribly sorry this had to happen, and we hope the DA does a, a legit investigation. We do hope so. I mean, he's going to put it into the grand jury. That's his cover. But this grand jury presentation and this grand jury presentation, he can nuance it. Let's see what Bragg does here.